Now, what was your question, brother? Uh, say, you when he say he coming in like a uh, like a thief in the night, uh -huh. that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be at night, though, right? No, it don't mean it's going to be at night. Right. But, but it just means that he's going to come when you're unaware. Right, right. right. Give me that and... Uh, no, no, don't leave that. Stay, stay down, Peter. It's coming. It's saying a uh, thief in the night, because like the host said, you're not going to be aware of it. That's why you got to be ready for when he come. All right, read, read, where you was at? Three, uh, first Peter's? No, go back to first Peter's. I got it right here, first Peter's three. Right, 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 and but jump down to 11. Okay. But so you just heard what he read. The Most High coming back, like a matter of fact, just read it again. Okay. First, first Peter chapter three, verse 10. Read it up. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Uh -huh, a thief in the night, meaning you're not gonna be aware. You're gonna be walking around, living your life, buying on the Sabbath, doing things that you didn't even know, not knowing that you're an Israelite, calling yourself African-American, calling yourself black, uh, wearing pants. I'm not pointing you out, but I'm just letting you know what we have to do to change. All right, so when this day comes, you will be ready for it. That's our goal right now, to teach our people when that day comes, you will be ready for it. Go ahead. In the which the heavens shall pass away with uh -huh. a great noise, uh -huh. and the elements shall <laughs> melt with the fervent heat, uh -huh. the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall this, be dissolved. This, this is the point that I want to read that part again, verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, uh -huh. with manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness. So that's what I was talking about when it said he's going to come back as a thief in the night. The scripture saying, now that you know that that type of day is going to come, what type of person are you going to be? Are you going to be righteous or are you going to be uh, ungodly? Yeah, yeah, right. You, you you understand? So what type of person are you going to be? Uh, it's something that I wanted to bring up. Oh, are y'all okay with the conditions that y'all can just look around? Where we at? Sugar Creek and Reagan. Y'all okay with the conditions that our people are in today? Give me uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 43. What do y'all see? It out. When you walk around this neighborhood, y'all see mass prostitution. Ain't nothing but prostitution over there. Y'all see drugs selling. Are we okay with that, with our conditions? We, we shouldn't be okay with that, but our people just accept it like it's every day. Yeah. It's all good. You know what I mean? Let them do them. That's, the, that's, our, that's our people's problem. We have no care for each other. We only care about ourselves. That's right. That's mad selfish. Right. That's right. You know what I mean? You got to care about the people that's in your communities. That's why our communities look like the slums right now. Because our people walking around, our women walking around prostituting themselves. Our men out here selling drugs to one another. They don't care if it's your grandpa, your granddaddy. Yeah. Hey, they're selling to their own mom. That's they don't right. give a damn. We read that. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 43. Uh huh. They said one to another, uh -huh. let us restore the decayed state of our people. That's what you see us doing, trying to restore the decayed state of our people. Right. Our people are in the slums and the ghetto. We got the worst education. We are on the, on the po uh, poverty list. We got um, abortion clinics in our community. We got nothing but uh, uh, liquor stores and gun stores in our community. We got the worst communities. Hey, we tired of living like that. Bring That's why out. we gotta come back to the scriptures and keep the um, keep the covenant of God, keep the laws. Right. You know what I mean? If our sisters would put on uh, dresses, men wouldn't be lusting at them. And 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 if our um and if they didn't lust at them, guess what? They'll be getting married to them instead of having single parent households. And Bring then doing what? Forcing the uh, forcing the women to have abortions because they laid down with a man that they never intended to be with. That's right. You know what I mean? That thing is out of order. Give me Leviticus chapter uh, 19, verse 29. I'm just, because I, I came over here, and the first thing that I seen walking down the street was a dead prostitute. The sister over here that came up with the yellow one, she walked to the truck over there. Was that you in the truck? What she said? That was you, G. That was you. What she say? I'm curious. Yeah, she was like, uh, I saw you looking at me. <laughs> you what, what, is, what is she doing? Right. What is she doing? She working. She working. Let's read that. Let's see what the Bible says about that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Uh -huh. Do not prostitute thy daughter uh -huh. to cause her to be a whore. You hear that? Do not call uh, prostitute your daughter. Matter of fact, I want it. Uh, Deuteronomy 23, 17. 
That's the one I wanted. But the point, the point still remains. A women have become so low that they feel like they don't even know that they wanted the precious thing to ever walk the earth. You know what I mean? Their, their beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Uh, in the eyes, they, they were made in the image of God, just like the men. And when I say us, I'm talking about blacks, Hispanics, and their Indians. Right. I'm not talking about the other nations. I'm talking about the people that's in a decayed state right now. All right? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Uh -huh. There should be no whore of the daughters of Israel, uh -huh. nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. You see that? That's another thing that's running rampant in our communities. Uh, homosexuality. Obama, uh, uh, black people thought he was the, the damn, uh, damn Moses, the black savior. But guess what? He instituted, he uh, he uh, he allowed uh, homosexuality. He he made that thing a law. He made it a law for now. We got we got that thing running rampant. Yeah, yeah. Now we got transgender. Now signing another uh, treaty, uh, say another law that's saying transgenders can play sports. You know what I mean? So if a woman feels like she's a man, she can play on a football team with the men, with the boys. That's what they, they're passing things like this. But our people out there voting. What are you voting for? You're voting for the same oppression that we had since we got off them slave ships. That's right. That's why we got to come back to the, uh, that's how we're going to re uh, fix the decayed state of our people. By coming back to God's laws. The Bible says not to be a whore or a prostitute. You know what I mean? And how are you going to do that? You have to learn these laws and then you have to apply them. And I keep going back to the sister because I didn't talk to y'all, but I talked to her about the pants. That's just, an, that's just one law that can help better our communities. That's it. And that's easy. Another one. Watch this. Uh, another law that's easy. Man, look, that both of y'all is keeping right now. I want to show you. The reason why I'm going to bring this up is I want to show you that the laws is not hard to keep. We walk around here in America every day keeping laws. Most of us anyway. We're walking around keeping laws. But when it comes to God's laws, now they say it's hard. Give me a Leviticus 21 and 5. I want to show you that the laws of God is not hard. It's not hard not to eat pork. It's not hard not to eat shrimp crab. You, you do that? You eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, any of that? I eat shrimp. What about you? What about us? Uh, what about you? No, you don't eat none of that. What about you? I eat all of it. You say you do? Yeah, all of it. See that? Look, you know that eating that, eating that stuff uh, can mess up mess up your dietary. It, it, it's not good for you. It's unhealthy. Right. The pig is the worst animal on the planet. The dirtiest animal on the planet. Bring it up. Shrimp and lobster. You know what? You know what their purpose is for? Yeah, they clean the bottom of the ocean. Their bottom feeders. Their bottom feeders. Why? Why would you eat that? Uh, well, I mean, other than the fact so that it's that like eating the pig, basically. Eating the pig, right? That's exactly what it is. It's like eating um. You know when you got the fish tank, you got the fish tank, right? And then allergy and stuff start to build up on the fish tank. But if you put these certain type of fish inside that tank, that allergy goes away. You know what I mean? Clams and stuff. Because you're not supposed to eat clams. But what are they doing? They're cleaning it. They're bottom feeders. They're, 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 their job is to clean the ocean. And then we put that stuff into our body. But read what you got. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head, uh -huh. neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So my point of bringing, y'all yeah. listen, my, the point of me bringing this scripture up is showing that we can keep the laws. Read it again. What did that say? What did that say? I want to see if y'all was listening. Now, I, I know y'all was listening. I was about to ask you to read it. I got you. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. Uh -huh. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Uh-huh. Neither shall Wait, they... What's that part mean? Not to make baldness upon... Nothing. Right, not to make baldness upon your head like Michael Jordan and all those other people. Uh -huh. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. What's that going into? Uh, shaving your face. Shaving right. your face. I see both of y'all got beards. That's a, that's a law to God. My point of bringing that up is that God's laws is not hard to keep. You know what I mean? Right. They, but people have taken those laws and say, oh, we can't do it. Give me Matthew chapter 5 verse 4. Right, so your hair, uh, but, so where does it speak about how it should be taken? Say again? Where does it speak about how your hair should be taken? Well, if you're, if you're not to shave your beard, that means you are to what? Grow it. Yeah, but what about your hair? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. The, the, the same thing. But get, hold on. Give me uh, Leviticus 18 and 1. Because it comes from the customs of the other nations. Whose drone is this? It's a, was oh, it, okay. Wasn't it, wasn't it, uh, wasn't his, it, was, it was somebody else that was in the, uh, he had, he had braids, long braids. Oh, uh, Samson. Yeah. Samson, uh, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, but my point is, is that the Most High gave us our own customs, and he wanted us to come out of the customs of the other nations. Right. When we was in, in Egypt, the Egypt, Egyptians used to do what? They used to shave their heads. That's right. And, and, and being in, enslaved in Egypt, you started to learn those customs. All right? Uh, read that what you got, Leviticus. Uh, Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 1. Uh -huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Uh -huh. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Uh -huh. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. So you see that? We were, uh... We were taking on the customs of the same people that we were enslaved to. So he said not to do those things. The Egyptians were shaving off their heads. In Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5, he said not to do that. I mean, if you're naturally going bald, ain't nothing you can do about that. But the, he said don't take on the customs of the other nations. Why? Because when you take on the customs of other nations, you start to celebrate this. You start to celebrate Christmas. You start to celebrate Thanksgiving, the murder of your people, uh, the murder of millions of Native Indians. What do you, what do you want? Right. Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 1. Uh -huh. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, uh -huh. take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thy head uh -huh. and upon thy beard. Then take thee balances to weigh and divide the hair. So what's that going into? That's going into grooming yourself. You can make yourself look neat. It's not saying shave it off. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> it's all good. Question, oh yeah, you can you can groom yourself. You can groom yourself up. That's so that's what that's going into. But so you know, a, excuse me, I'm sorry. There's a verse though that speaks about long hair. God not like long hair or to the mom or to the family. Your hair is long. Your hair is long. Yeah. You don't know what scripture it is? I have to look it up. I think it's something like Corinthians over there. So, my point is, is in, in keeping God's laws, guess what? We're going to start to clean up the, our communities. Uh, our communities, we'll, uh, we'll start to be able to better raise our children. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And all I'm following God's laws. So that's the whole point of us coming up here, or being out here. It's the word. The word builds men. Right, 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 absolutely. The word builds men. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.